All right, guys, let's back up for just a second and take a look at Lesson 17 Project Interactive Card. This became the last uh, project that showed up on your first nine weeks grade card. And some of you um, still have some things on here that we need to finish. So in this interactive card, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for several sprites, an interactive background, and I want to see use of commands for the user. So I'm looking to see that you've used up arrows or space or key press down or mouse press or something to that effect so that it's not just a blank canvas anymore. It's actually the user gets to interact with whatever it is that you've created. Okay. Let me adjust my, my, uh, light here so it doesn't look like I'm in the dark. So when we hit run, the first thing you'll notice is an example. So in this example, if I just move my mouse over top of the present, I get a surprise. So first we have that movement of the present. Once that movement has happened several times, then I get two presents that pop out. Okay. So that is just one example of how you could have tackled this project. So let's move on. So for this one, you have three different examples. We've already seen the first ex or the middle example. Let's take a look at the first example. So in the first example, I'm not sure why I'm in. Let's go to blocks view. Sometimes it remembers my last setting. Okay. So in blocks view, I can see from scrolling down here that I'm supposed to mouse press over flowers. If I click, 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 I get a surprise. I, they all end up in a vase at the end. Nice, simple, to the point, um, great interactive card. Let's take a look at the third one. If I can get back there. For whatever reason, the computer likes to keep me in the dark. Keep me in the dark. There we go. All right, let's take a look at the third one. So if I scroll down and take a peek, key went down space. Ooh, looks like I've got some sound. We've got a left button. We've got a right button. And we've got some more sound. All right, so let's see what happened. Space. Ooh, super loud. Let's try the left button. Okay, and the right button. All right, so left, we get the bike noise. Right, no noise. All righty, so again, great. Just a little loud and a little, a little scary at first. So let's go back. So all these are perfect examples of what it is that you could turn in. So let's go create our own real quick. So let me restart here. So the first thing we've got to do, as always, is put a background in. I have to commit to a background. So I'm going to go over here, go to my backgrounds, decide what it is I'm doing. What am I going to do? I don't know. Let's pick this one, because why not? So first I start with the sprites. Drag over a sprite variable. Remember, it goes above the function draw. I'm going to call it back. For background, I'll drag over a set animation, use the same label, choose the one image that I have in there, and then the last thing I need is a draw sprites block. So I'm going to go ahead and put this draw sprites block inside the function draw, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put my set animation for my background in there as well, because I'm going to have to put them in there anyway. So there we have it. Why is that so tiny? Huh. Hmm. 
is very weird. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. Here, let me do that. Scroll up. If that changes it. Me? Uh, okay. <clears throat> so we're dealing with pink background. That's it for that bubble. Let's move on. Alrighty, for bubble four, we've got to add sprites. So now we just need some sprites, something that's going to make the card interactive. Um, it could be a card for a birthday or Christmas or a just because or an I love you, or Mother's Day or whatever you want. I want to see that you know how to build those sprite interactions in there using um, the key down press and all those things. So what am I going to do? Let's see, I got a pink background. I'm going to do things that are pink. What is pink? Okay, we got a cute bunny. I don't think I've ever used that bunny before. <clears throat> a sticker. Oh, interesting. Oh, we got to use the cat. And what else is in this drawer? And they look like stickers because there's an outline to it. Okay, I'm going to use this. But I want it to look the other direction, so I'm going to flip it vertically. And you know what? I think I might have changed my mind on the bunny. Let's do one more thing. Let's go to the stickers. And let's see here. Let's do the cupcake. Okay, because why not? All right, so first I got to add all my sprites. And remember, I'm going to show text. Put the cursor up here, put some spaces. That's how you get spaces if you want them. They don't do anything except spread stuff out. If you like them, you can get them. So this is a unicorn variable. Add the set animation for unicorn. Tie it to the picture of the unicorn. Uh-oh. I better go name these better. This is Kitty. This is... Who named some stickers? Unicorn. This is Cupcake. Alright, much better. Let's try this again. Better. Okay, reset and run. What do I got? Okay, there it is. It's a little too big. Scale it down. The corn's going to be 0 0.5. Better. Now I'm going to scoot it over. I want it to go to the right, so that's X. So I said 200X. I want 300X. Beautiful. Now let's add in the cat. Kitty. And then it's animation for kitty. Choose the kitty. I want to go ahead and preemptively change that to 100x. So that it's over towards the left. Whoa, and it's way too big. Oh, I should have done that. Kitty is going to scale down to 0 0.3. The kitty to be a little smaller than the unicorn because the kitty should be smaller than the unicorn. And 100 still too close, so I'm going to do 50x. Beautiful. All right, so now, last thing I'm going to add in is I'm going to add in the cupcake. Cupcake. And cupcake. And cupcake. And the cupcake's nice and big and in the middle. <clears throat> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to hide the cupcake for now. And here's how you do that. Sprite.visible. Sprite.visible makes it false. Okay, false. So right now the cupcake's there, but it's not there. No one knows that it's there. Okay. So have I added all my sprites? Yes, I have. That level is done. Let's move on.
For this one, we need to add in user input. So we're going to use if blocks and if else blocks. And we're going to add in loops and key mouse and key down and all that cool stuff. So let's see what kind of interactivity we can build into our function draw. Okay, so all motion has to go inside the if statement or the function draw. Okay, all motion goes inside the green function draw. <clears throat> so let's see here. I'm going to start with an if. So if key down, if key down left, then I want I want unicorn x to get unicorn x minus 1. Because I want the unicorn to move if I push left. Here's a hint. Later on, we're going to stop using this math and start using velocity x and velocity y. But that's for a later lesson. All right, so let's test this out. If I push the left button, the unicorn moves. Wonderful. If I push the right button, let's set that up. If I push the right button, if key down right, if key down right, then I want my unicorn. I can spell unicorn. Unicorn to go right. And all this should feel very familiar to you. I've been working on these motions for a while. All right, test it out. Right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Okay, so that motion's good. Now I want the cat to do something. What do I want the cat to do? So if mouse down. So if mouse down, I want mouse down. No, I want if mouse pressed over. If mouse pressed over kitty, then I want, ooh, maybe I have a sound. What if I have a meow? Let's find it. Let's see. Search for. Oops. Meow? No. Yep. What does it sound like? Okay. We're going to take it. So, if mouse pressed over kitty, then the kitty's going to meow. Let's see. Why was that so loud? Let me get rid of the false. Hmm. Okay. So we got a cat meow. Now, we still have that cupcake. Okay. So let's not forget about the cupcake. So let's do... Let's talk about conditional for the sprite themselves. Okay. So let's say if, if, because we know that the one thing that's moving is the unicorn. So I'm going to say if unicorn X becomes greater or less than, I'm sorry, if unicorn X becomes less than zero, meaning it goes off the screen to the to the left. If unicorn x becomes less than zero, then I want unicorn to become invisible. I want kitty to become invisible. I want cupcake Fill this up so you can see it better. Cupcake to become visible, but true. And I want Cupcake to do something. 
What do I want Cupcake to do? I want Cupcake shape color. That's interesting. I want it to... Let's make it jiggle. Yep. Whoops. Cupcake is going to get a random number. Negative 10. Positive 10. And I'm going to add in some words here. Fill color yellow. I'm going to do text string. I need. Ooh, I can change my font. Did you know you could change your font? I need a pixel size. There it goes. Text size pixel. Okay, so I need it big 35. Uh, I'm gonna do. Oops, I hate when these blocks pop up. Uh, let's see here. I want it to show up right in the middle. So I'm gonna do 120, 150. 120, 150. And I may have to adjust that. And I want it to say. Price. So let's see what happens. Oh, first, this block here, this draw sprites block, because I got text in there, I'm going to put this draw sprites block at the top. If it's gone, that should, that should make it happen. Let's see what happens. I could be wrong. Okay. I'm going to push this open. The unicorn is walking. Walking all the way off the stage. Do, 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 do. She is leaving the stage. She's going, oh, and there it is. Surprise! Surprise! All right, so where were we? We've got our user input left, right, mouse over, and then we have one interaction that is triggered by the sprite itself. Okay, so we're going to hit finish, move on. And let's see if we've got anything else to add in these last couple blocks or bubbles. So for other conditionals, the surprise in your card comes from conditionals that don't directly respond to input. So I've actually already done that. My surprise in this card <clears throat> is down here, line 27. If unicorn less x less than zero. So built the surprise in, done with bubble six, move on. Let's look at bubble seven. Level 7 says finishing touches. Now's your chance to put some finishing touches in your card. We've included some new blocks that haven't been there before. Okay. Ooh, sound effects. We did already do the sound effect. So what other blocks did they give us? I'm curious. Mirror. I've never used mirror. Interesting. So if you want to use those, be my guest. Check them out, see what's going on. Got a point and an arc and a regular polygon and all that stuff. So I think at this point I might take a look at my uh, background and maybe change that background because it's not as big as I wanted it to be. But I'm not sure. Let me put the center, crop, toggle. Let's see if I can find something else that's more, that's as big as the whole screen. What are my options? Might come back for this sun and rainbow. Yeah, let's do the sun and rainbow. And so go to code, and the only thing I need to do now 
Let's go right here to my background line 17 and change it to sun and rainbow. Let's see what that looks like. Much better. Beautiful. All right. At this point, I'm done. I'm going to hit submit. <clears throat> And then the last thing you need to do is take a survey, a five-question survey. And that's it for Lesson 17. Hope that helps.